Hello and welcome to this brief introduction to Hawaii Hue Finesse, the new color grading plugin for Premiere, After Effects, Final Cut and Motion. Hue Finesse brings you precise, targeted color enhancement with all the power and depth that's built into every Hawaii product. So let's take a look. So here we are in Final Cut. I'm going to come down to the Effects Browser, grab Hue Finesse and drag it onto this test shot. This is a shot from the ACES archive, which they have very kindly allowed us to use for the purposes of this tutorial. So here we are. This is the Hue Finesse interface, and you can see that it's got a number of different sections. The view menu, first of all, gives us a range of options for monitoring our results as we work. The input section allows us to set the color space. Now, this, as I say, is a shot from ACES, so let's switch to ACES CG. And we've got some other controls here that are extremely useful. But let's hide the input section and open up primary correction. Now, this is not part of the main Hue Finesse process, but it does allow us to do some basic setup before we get going. Although I would point out that you can either have this pre the Hue Finesse process or post. I'm going to stick with pre. First of all, I'm just going to turn on white balance. By default, the white balance is automatic, but you've got loads of manual control if that's what you need. In this case, the automatic process has slightly overcorrected the shot, so let me just dial that down a bit. Let's also turn on the primary correction. And I think what I'm going to do here is reduce the density so we get a nice thin looking result. And then we can use Hue Finesse to restore some chosen colors, specifically the reds and the yellows. So that's the primary correction. And as you can see, there's a lot of really useful stuff in there. So now let's hide that and come on to the main Hue Finesse effect. Now, the way that I'd recommend working is using this solo option, which lets you solo the hue band that you want to work with. And I just want to point out that in addition to the main red, yellow, green, cyan, blue and magenta options, there's also a skin and a grey band selection that you can use. So skin obviously is for isolating skin tones and grey is for the pixels that have limited or no saturation. So let's work on the red and a good way of doing that is by soloing the red from this menu here. And you can see that it solos the red controls as well. So let's open that up and let's get going. So we want to see exactly what we're affecting. So from the view menu, let's select the on color option. So this uses the familiar method of isolating the chosen band over gray. So you can see the default band is quite wide. It's picking up some of these yellows and it's also picking up some of her skin tone. So what we can do is refine the hue range, the saturation range and the value range for a more targeted result. Now, what I really like about these sliders are these gradients, which give us a really good visual indication of the values that we're including or excluding. So I'm just going to refine the hue range like this. I also want only the most saturated reds, so I can select them like this. Now, in this case, we don't need to adjust the value range, but in a lot of cases, that's going to be another useful control. So that's our basic selection. And then what we can do is switch back to the effect view and we can start to make our grading adjustments. Now, I want to restore some of that density, so I can do that like this. And I also want to saturate these particular shirts, so I can do that with the saturation slider like this. And we've also got the option of the saturation being subtractive, so let's turn that on. And you can see that in this case, it gives a really nice result. Now, sometimes subtractive is a great thing to have, and sometimes less so. So it's great to be able to have the choice between the two. So you'll also note that we've got a hue control, we've got a gamma control, we've got a master gain, and we've got RGB gain as well, which gives you a lot of control over the grading of your selection. So let's now take a look at the yellows. So from the menu, I'm going to select the yellow band. As before, let's switch to on color to get a good idea of our selection. So let's open up the yellow section. Now there's a feature that I haven't yet mentioned. And that's in this master hue finesse section, and it's the color model. The default is HSV, but as you can see, we've got two other options, one of which is spherical and the other which is OKLCH. OK and for this, I'm going to use OKLCH, OK and you'll see immediately the difference that makes. And the advantage here is that it's removed her skin tones from the selection entirely before we even get going. 
And the other thing we can do is to turn on Refine Mask, and that enables more controls, as you'll see down here. You'll see that the hue, saturation and value ranges now come with a dedicated softness control for each. And there are some additional options as well. So let's just refine this a little bit more. Let's adjust the hue range. And let's adjust the saturation range to exclude the less saturated yellows. And if I adjust the softness control, you'll notice how that range expands and contracts. So I'm happy with my yellow selection, so let's switch back to the effect view. Again, let's increase the density of those shirts and play with the saturation like this and see whether or not we like subtractive. While we're here, let's look at some of the additional controls we've got for refining the mask. I'll switch back to on color. So in addition to a gain control, we've got this clip black and white control. And as you can see, these are useful for firming up our selection. We can also blur the selection like this. And since we activate blur, you'll notice that an additional clip option appears below it. And we can use that to firm up the result of the blur like this. And the other thing I haven't yet talked about is the shape option. And you can see we've got a button here on screen where we can turn on the shape. But let me just turn it on here from the inspector instead. And now you can see we've got this shape that we can use to isolate the overall correction. And we can refine the shape using these on-screen controls. So here I'm just isolating these two shirts. Or alternatively, we could go with these two over here. And those others are not selected. But the really useful thing is that you can choose for each band whether or not the shape is enabled. And you can invert it as well. So here, for example, by inverting the mask for the yellow, the yellow shirt inside the mask is excluded. Notice too that the shape also has its own section here where we can affect the roundness, the softness, the gain, the angle, and so on. So I've only been able to scratch the surface of what's in here, but I will just point out that there is this configure section down here where, if you want, you can define your own ranges for a lot of these controls. And you can use the preset system to save your custom configuration. So this is really powerful and you can configure everything exactly the way you want. And of course you can save presets in the normal way for the overall effect. So I hope that's been a useful overview. Hue Finesse is available exclusively through Effects Factory. And that means you can download a free trial version and try it out for yourself. Thanks for watching.